If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. In the name of the one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. Please be seated. The final stage of birthing and labor is called transition. It happens to be the most dangerous and painful. Again, the medical term for this part of labor is transition. Transition feels like dying, but it is the stage that precedes the birth of new life. As a mother of three boys who did this outlandish thing of foregoing medicine during childbirth for the last two pregnancies, I know what transition is. I have felt that pain. I know the intensity that comes at this critical time in childbirth, that overwhelming feeling of wanting to give up, where you feel as though a part of yourself is literally dying because the pain is so intense and raw. It might be a far stretch for some, But in today's gospel, I can't help but recognize the same intensity and pain in Jesus. And I can't help but wonder if it's because he too is in transition. He's hyper-focused, acutely aware of what must happen because Like a woman giving birth, he knows his life is a vessel for something greater that is coming. For me, the thought of what was coming on the other side, new life, babies, At times, somehow miraculously and mysteriously superseded the searing pain that I felt in the middle of labor. It gave way to courage and ability I never thought I had. That is what pushed me through accessing, calling out that deep wisdom of knowing that something better and more beautiful was on the other side of my agonizing pain. During intense moments such as transition and labor and transitions in the gospel narrative, words of comfort that are trying to make the situation better just don't seem to matter. In fact, they are more of an annoyance. A woman in labor knows what must happen to feel better. Give birth. And Jesus, a man on his way to Jerusalem to die, also knows what has to happen to relieve his suffering. There are no words that can make this better or smooth it over. It just has to happen. But Peter, our friend, he finds out the hard way. Jesus' words to Peter are strong, oh, and they are harsh. Remember, in last week's gospel, Peter recognizes finally that Jesus is Messiah. 
And now Jesus has the courage to profess that he is the Christ, the son of the living God. He is trying to tell those closest to him that this road ahead of him is not going to be easy. And the time wasn't far off where we, he would suffer and he would be tortured and he would be killed in Jerusalem. And Peter, he couldn't take it. So he says, God forbid it, Lord, this will never happen. And that is when Jesus says these famous words, get behind me, Satan, you are in my way. Remember, it is also Jesus who gave Peter the name Rock. But at this point, Peter really is a stumbling block, a rock blocking, trying to block the grim road that Jesus knew he had to take. Whether he or Peter or anybody else wanted it that way or not, Jesus knew he had to. Jesus was in transition. He knows what his fate is, and he knows he must go to Jerusalem to die. So this idea of transition I've been taken with for a number of years. I've spoken about this before. Because I oftentimes find that we ourselves find ourselves in moments of transition whether in childbirth, in the throes of a debilitating disease or a relationship that is dying, or wherever you find yourself. Perhaps you're at a crossroads in life where every day you get up and go to work and ask yourself the question, what does this even mean or matter? If you find yourself in any of these circumstances, or whatever you might be struggling with, I would offer these words firstly to you. You are not alone. You are probably in some kind of transition, and transition, it always leads somewhere, but while you're in it, oh, it's so uncomfortable, and it's so hard, and you wish you could get out of it. But I will also say this, the gift of transition is that it's not forever. It may seem like it is, but it's not. I kind of look at it as being a hallway that's leading someplace, though the light at the end may seem to be so far away that it's just not possible to reach it, but you will. And while moving forward, it may seem like death to yourself is unbearable, and painful beyond what you think is possible to endure, but you will, and you can. Just like Jesus, perhaps you too are headed to Jerusalem. But what I will say in these moments of transition, in a moment of honesty, we probably aren't necessarily looking for all the lessons that come. Believe me, I can really only talk about transition and labor a number of years after having experienced it. But there will come a time when your pain isn't so intense and searing. And whatever you are facing now won't feel so unbearable. 
And upon reflection and with time, you might even see the lessons and the wisdom gained. Although maybe that feels so far away right now. But what I will say, when you do, you will realize that you are stronger than you ever thought you were or could be. You are. And maybe the only time you will see that is when you have moved through your own transition that you are facing. But I will say this again, and thanks be to God, transitions are temporary. They are not meant to last forever. They are not a place in which we continually reside. And knowing all of this, we must hold intention that oftentimes transition, and maybe you are right here in a transition, and it feels like death every single day. But the hopeful word in this is this. It is the stage that precedes the birth of new life. Hold on to that. In all of our various creative labors, making a living, raising a family, cultivating relationships, there are moments that are so painful we want to give up. But inside searing pain, we might also find the depths of our courage. We might hear our deepest wisdom and transition to the other side with all of this giving hope. I can't help but think that Jesus in his own way is doing just that in this moment where he is forecasting what must happen to him. He is summoning courage, calling on wisdom that he never thought possible, quieting the voices around him that tell him otherwise, fortifying himself for his walk to Jerusalem. All the while knowing that it is only through facing and walking the road to Jerusalem, he will come out of transition to the other side. There isn't a choice to walk around it or beside it. He knows that he has to walk through it. And so do we. We have to in order to get to the other side, which is just another way of saying, bringing us to new life, birthing something new. I have to believe in a room with this many people gathered, some of you may feel as though you are in the fight of your life right now. And for some of you, as I look out, I know your stories and I know how true that is. You, are, you may feel like you are losing a part of your life every day with what you are facing, but please hear this. This great paradox in the life of faith is spoken by Jesus this morning. For those who want to save their life, you will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake will find it. Whatever transition time in life you are, hear me say you are not alone, and it will not last forever. Might I even be so bold as to suggest 
that perhaps you are even in a sacred and very, very holy place. Even if it feels the exact opposite of that, discomfort, pain, sorrow, letting go, those are the things most of us would never seek after on our own, but they do come. Or they will come. They, in fact, my friends, are just what it means to be human. But what we do with those things when they come are what are tellers of who we are. What we choose to do during these times is what can be the most life-transforming and revealing moments of our lives. Knowing that even though pain comes, in order to save ourselves, death must come. But once death comes, new life can begin. In the name of the one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. May the Lord, mighty Lord, bless and keep you forever, granting peace, perfect peace, courage in every blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you this day and always. Amen.